Okay, sorry about that. I thought I had this uh, technology down and for some reason I got totally disconnected. So um, if anyone is still there, hopefully you'll clock, you'll get back on the live. So um, anyways, okay. So all that craziness with the, it didn't tell me I was live. I am so sorry if you just saw the camera going all over the place. Um, I wasn't seeing anything. So, um, sorry about that. Totally apologize. <laughs> okay, this is just a test to see if you're going to hang on with me. So, um, I very much apologize for that. So, hey there, funny girl. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Glad to see you're back. Um, I'm assuming you can hear me okay. And uh, sorry for the dizziness. I don't know what you saw because I wasn't seeing anything. <laughs> So now that's a little bit scary. So hi, Nicola, how are you? Um, happy to have you here. So anyways, I do apologize for the little bit of technical glitching. Um, this is just gonna have to be amusing, I guess. We have to roll with it. So um, tonight, of course, is night three. I'm so excited. Um, you're still hanging in there. And uh, so uh, just like I did last night, I'm going to do a little bit of a recap. So um, the first night, um, we're here with our FeelFab 3R Protocol mini course. And um, I did send out workbooks today. I finally uh, was able to figure out how to get a workbook out. So it's there later on, but I know most of you have just been taking notes. So um, I'm, you know, just, we'll just go with that for now. So on Monday night, the first night, um, kind of did an introduction about what Feel Fabulous Nutrition is all about, why I started the group. I really want to have a higher level of conversation with seasoned women about health. Um, many times that's going to include weight and body image and the, all the confusion with diets and things that are out there. Just to have a higher level conversation. Uh, we're all seasoned women. We're mature. We don't need to be talking about things like let's try to lose 10 pounds this weekend to fit into our bikini. And not that that's, it's not, I'm not putting anybody down who's doing those type of things. But once you reach a certain point in your life, we're looking more for health. We want our bodies to, um, you know, live in vitality, um, still be able to move, age gracefully, if you want to put it that way. Um, I'm not aging, I'm going backwards. So anyways, um, so we talked a little bit of all about the mission and what I'm trying to accomplish and what I want to share with women and what I want to help women do. I want to help women feel fabulous in the second half of their life, be as healthy as they possibly can be, and really be a vibrant woman living out their life and and not just settling is, is what we were talking about. So I have uh, put together a three R protocol. Um, the first R we talked about Monday night, which was relaxing. And that is relaxing while taking action. So I covered things like the sympathetic nervous system versus parasympathetic. And of course, you can go back and watch the other videos and, uh, you know, see everything, uh, everything that we talked about. Talk about how powerful it is if you slow down, especially when you're eating and how your body will have a chance to assimilate your food better and um, you won't have as many digestive issues and things like that. So we kind of covered that. Um, we talked about starting from a clean slate so that you're not bringing in, especially for many of us like myself, who've had decades of struggling um, with my weight, with my body image. Um, and I, I really just, you know, to start clean again sometimes is a challenge when you've had decades of that. So one of the things that I'm, you know, really focused on um, in my group program, it's really a hybrid, it's, it's group and personal coaching, but is to really start start a clean slate. It doesn't matter where you've been, where what has happened up till now. You are here now, whatever your situation is. Um, you know, whether that's good, medium, not so good, it doesn't matter because we're going to move forward and we're going to take, I want to give you the tools to go in that direction to move forward. 
So we talked about those things on Monday night. And then um, last night we were talking about releasing, which is my second R. And when I talk about releasing, I'm really talking about releasing all sorts of toxins. Now, these are toxins, not only toxins that are in our bodies that potentially need to be removed from our bodies and released, and sometimes they're stuck there, and that's kind of a protective thing in our fat cells, so we talked a little bit about that, but we do wanna release that, but also very, very important to release the toxins from some of our beliefs. And um, so we talked about that last night, how we do have a lot of times toxic beliefs that we've just grown up with um, throughout our lives, uh, like food is the enemy, um, that something's wrong with me, that I haven't been able to lose weight and things like that. So, hey, Kathy, happy for, I'm glad you came on. So um, all of these things we talked about last night, just releasing all of these things. Then we talked a little bit about things like heavy metals that can be in our body, inflammation, um, the health of our microbiome, our gut microbiome in particular, we were talking about last night, and then some environmental toxins that we all have to deal with as well. So the R of my protocol, which I followed, of course, myself, is um, that you need to start releasing all of these things because if you... If you're starting without doing these first steps, then to me, that's kind of been the missing part. If you don't first just relax, forget about all the, the issues you may have had in the past and, and you start from a clean slate and then you think about releasing all of these toxic beliefs and, and how your body is, is potentially holding on to toxins that we want to release. And so those were the first two nights. So tonight is a little bit more fun because we get to actually talk about replenishing, which is my third R in my 3R protocol. So I, the title of tonight was Replenish, Finding Pleasure in Food, Body, and Soul. So um, the, part, the third part of my protocol is really, okay, so we, we've slowed down, we've taken a look at where we are, we understand we're going to be releasing and we're starting to work on releasing toxic beliefs and um, taking a, a look at maybe if we have some toxic type things in our bodies, the places, just paying attention to where things are stuck. And then we want to start to release those things. And then of course, all of this builds on one another, by the way, the three R's are constantly intertwining. It's not like, okay, I did the first R, the second R, and now I'm on the third. They're constantly going to be evolving and revolving around each other. So the third R is how do we replenish ourselves, okay? How do we start from that clean slate and what are we gonna do moving forward to make sure that we are in a state of replenishing? So um, again, the first thing I, I talk about a little bit is of course we can talk about food. How would we replenish with food? So my beliefs in the diet world, now tomorrow night we are gonna talk about the various diets that are out there and some, and I'm gonna be talking about more specifics as far as food and if you have questions about that, of course I'll answer those and um, just as a reminder, we do have a question answer session that will be on Saturday morning. So if you have some questions that you're thinking about while we're going through this whole series, definitely um, send them in to me or put them in the chat comments and I'll be answering all of those questions then if I don't answer something while we're actually going through these evenings, okay? So um, when we're talking about food, um, replenishing quality, quality, quality. <laughs> Um, one of the things that I think, one of the reasons we have so many toxins in our bodies that we, as we get older, we're, we're kind of like, well, what happened? All of a sudden, it seemed like now I have aches, I have pains, I have this issue or that issue. That never happened before. Well, 
it, it's been accumulating. It's been happening. A lot of where we are today in our body is from years of that accumulation. So one of the keys now, and I had told a little bit about my story the first night. Um, you know, I didn't grow up. I grew up in a loving household that, you know, my mom served us um, all the best food that she knew to serve. Um, but in retrospect, it was a lot of sugar, a lot of cakes and cookies and ice creams and all those kind of things. And not a whole lot of fresh vegetables, fresh fruit. We had canned things and all sorts of, you know, type of food like that. And so when you get in that habit and you eat a lot of the standard American diet, you're going to accumulate a lot of toxins and you're going to start to have inflammation. Um, all, a lot of that does get stored in our fat cells as well. So some of these toxins and things that we want to start to open the doors to let them release themselves naturally, it's going to start with a clean slate and starting to look at our food differently. We have to really look at our food as nourishment. Um, I don't, I take the, the stand that when we're looking on moving forward and, and getting healthy and losing weight, if that's an issue that you have, um, is one that I, is one of my goals and what I've been doing for myself is that you really have to look at it not as a diet where I'm, what can I not have? but really look at it from a fresh point of view. It's, it's a paradigm shift that if you're looking at it like, what is going to nourish my body? What is my body going to enjoy eating? And what is what would be more natural that my body would be able to um, have minerals and vitamins and everything that's going to increase my vitality through my food choices. So if you view it that way, it isn't so much what am I not going to eat, but it's how is this food going to nourish me so I can live this vibrant life that I want to live. Does that make sense? Everybody who make it sense, you can give me a little yes, makes sense. Okay. So, um, in talking about that, I believe that eventually what I want to accomplish with the women that I work with is to dive a little bit more into your own intuitions. Now, are there some basic nutritional foundations? Yes, of course there are, you know, and those are things that we want to talk about. But I, I would think that most of us do understand. So it isn't a eat a salad because the salad is better, better than eating a piece of cheesecake or something like that. It, it's not a question of that. It's what is the salad going to do for me? How is this going to nourish me? How many different types of lettuce and, and different fun things and herbs and, and spices and maybe some seeds and nuts and what can I have in this salad that is going to nourish me. And if we start to look at our meals that way, it, it isn't, we're not depriving ourselves, but we're choosing wisely as mature women when we're going to, what we're going to put into our bodies. We want to respect ourselves. We want to treat ourselves with the more love than anyone else could give us. So if we think that way, then we want to start picking that wisely. So of course, um, it, unfortunately in today's agricultural world, there is a lot of GMOs, um, which is modified foods and, um, <clears throat> excuse me. And there's, um, so going organic pretty much makes sense. Um, fortunately there's so much information. There are certain foods that we can, you can Google real quick. Um, the top 15 foods that you must have that to be organic. And that's just because some of these 
foods, um, vegetables and things will tend to absorb some of the pesticides and things from the grounds if it's not organic. So we want to do our best to make sure on those foods that we are eating organic. And then after that, do what you can do. But real, what I call real food is what we want to eat. Okay. Um, real fruits, real vegetables, um, real meats that if, if you're not a vegetarian, um, you know, meats and, and fish that fish, wild caught fish, um, definitely on your beef, uh, the, that is a huge source of inflammation. If you're not having grass fed, grass finished beef. So, you know, you may say, well, this is going to change my budget. Um, I haven't noticed that big of a change, to be perfectly honest. Um, there are some instances where, yes, you might spend a little bit more, but the money that you're going to save in the long run from having better health, is it's, it's worth it and you're worth it. So organic type foods, um, some of the things that um, I talk about as far as, you know, in, in my program that I do is really try to have a colorful plate. Um, and the reason I keep these things simple, I feel like sometimes people, they want to be told exactly what to do. But then what happens if you say, okay, eat these, these foods, and you're extremely specific about that. Sometimes what happens is that people then can't adapt. They don't know what to do if they're in a restaurant or they're in a place where now they can't have those foods. And then they feel like they start to get stressed, which we talked about that on the first night. They start to have so much anxiety about not being able to eat the right foods. They're actually doing their body more harm at that point just relax and do the best that you can do. But yes, fresh, lots and lots of ve vegetables are fantastic for us. Now, of course, everything as far as eating foods, it is going to be individualized. Um, you may have your particular body may not like a certain vegetable. It may you may not feel very good if you eat it. These are the little nuances that you're going to notice as you go along, as you clean up what you're eating and putting that nourishing food in your body, your body will respond very, very quickly. I mean, you'll, I would say for me, it was maybe less than two weeks, I noticed a huge difference when I first started eating this way. And as soon as I started to eat food that was processed or uh, cooked in rancid oils, which we talked a little bit about last night, those type of foods, my body said, what are you doing? <laughs> it didn't like it anymore. And it's amazing. And you would think that this transition would take a long time but it really doesn't take a long time. It does go very, very quickly that your body is so happy to have nourishing food, it, it will respond. And if we listen to our bodies, which is, is the goal, is to listen to what our body's telling us, then we will start to pay more and more attention. And if you slow down, like we talked about the first night, and really look at your plate. I mean, look at the colors on your plate. Um, what do you, when I make a salad, I mean, it's not a piece of lettuce with a bunch of dressing on it. It, it has all sorts of things in it. Uh, tonight I had a salad with some pine nuts and a little bit of pumpkin seeds in there and a little bit of feta cheese on it, some apple cider vinegar or olive oil type of dressing. And it was delicious. It was delicious. A little bit of grass fed beef on there too. Not too much, but so you can have fun with this. Have fun. Um, figure out which foods that you enjoy the most because when you're replenishing yourself, you want to enjoy your food as well. So start to just make little tweaks here and there. And of course, in our protocol program, that's what we go through. But want you to embrace and enjoy whole foods. I do get a lot of questions as far as um, people who, and I'm going to talk about keto diets and things like that tomorrow night. Um, I personally think that fruit 
fresh fruit can be wonderful. I think fruit is more of a quantity. Um, so if you're going to have fruit, there is a lot of natural sugars. Um, so if you say, oh, well, great, I can have fruit. So I'm going to make a, a bowl. Hey, hey, Barbell, nice to have you in. Um, if I, then all of a sudden you have the equivalent of 20 fruit in a sitting. Well, that doesn't make sense either. Um, if you kind of, if you look at your food a little bit more in the sense of how is our, the human beings developed and you look a little bit back in time and just think about, would we really in a day years ago, would we really have four five, six, seven pieces of fruit? No, <laughs> we, we wouldn't have that. We would probably have one fruit a day, maybe two, maybe a few berries, things like that. So I'm not against having fruit. I just think that the portion of fruit should make sense. And normally, again, your body will let you know if you're having too much of that. So some of it's going to be your own curiosity and looking at what is going to work the best for my body. Now, if for a time you want to not have fruit, then that's okay too. But uh, there's, there's some good things in having some fruit here and there. So especially berries and things are really, they're so packed with so much antioxidants. It, it, they're wonderful to have. I'm not against having any uh, fruit and things like that. So, um, so that's how we want to look at food. We want to look at it as enjoyment, not as something that we're taking away, but everything that you're going to put into your body, think about, is this nourishing my body? Is this going to make my body feel vital? And if you truly, of course, have questions about that, well, what about this type of food or that type of food? Then um, just ask me and, and we can go through some uh, particulars, but I think you get the main drift of what I'm trying to say at this point. So for food, whole foods, quality, 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 as high as you can have. If you can't, for whatever reasons, you're in a situation, then just relax, enjoy what it is you have, pass it up if you want to pass it up, or if you have a taste of something, maybe you're in a setting that you don't have a lot of other choices. So you relax, you, you do that because as long as most of the time you're eating your own choices, you, then that's going to be the best thing for you. And in the long run, because remember, this is a long term. We're not doing this for just a short term situation. We want this to be a long term goal. So um, that's n replenishing and um, finding pleasure again in our food. Okay. Food should be pleasurable. You should not be eating food in fear or in deprivation there's so many recipes and things that we can share that really can, food should be enjoyable to you and you should take your time, eat it, enjoy every single morsel because it is keeping you alive and nourishing your body. And we'll start to tweak more and more exactly what would be the best way for you to, um, you know, to eat the right foods for you personally. Hope that makes sense. So, okay, um, let's talk a little bit about replenishing and nourishing your body. So that's something to me that I pretty much take a look at that from the standpoint of a little bit of body image. A lot of us, I actually, I, I wrote a free guide that's on my website um, that any of you could uh, go on the website. It's usually a pop-up and you can get that. It's a free guide. It's 10 secrets to revive your body wisdom. And um, so that's, that's a good place to start because we also need to have pleasure again in our own bodies. The more that we know our own body, the more that we're going to make choices that is going to have us have the best health for the rest of our lives. And 
knowing our bodies and, and, and maybe where our bodies are stuck is very important. And part of that is movement. It's appreciating your body. What I found is that it seems like many people, I know it, it happened to myself, that if we're unhappy with our bodies, possibly because of a change that we've gained weight or um, our body doesn't maybe look the same or things, you know, as, as it did before, that there's a frustration there. And then we, what we call disembody, we basically start to not appreciate our bodies anymore. Not only from the standpoint of we, we don't even look at our bodies, we don't pay attention, but we're, we're just kind of zoning out. And we can use food to zone out. Sometimes that's the way, but sometimes it's just by not moving our bodies anymore, not appreciating what our bodies can do. So finding pleasure and replenishing our bodies for good health, it's going to include putting back movement, paying attention to your body again, doing things for your body that is pleasurable for you. Now, everybody's different at what that means. For me, I go from the gamut of going on a hike or horseback riding to having man, a man, a pedicure and manicure and, and, and having my hair done and, and all of those type of things, but also movement. Um, I know that some of the women that I've talked to about these things would say, but I don't, you know, I don't feel comfortable moving my body. Um, and I'm not, I don't feel comfortable to go to a gym or work out. Movement is what is key. You don't have to go to a gym. You don't have to work out, but you do want your body to be flexible. So wherever you're at, whatever that situation is, move your body more, appreciate that body. Um, look at your, we're all still here. So look at every single part of your body. What can you appreciate on every single part of your body. Are you still able to talk? Can you still see? Can you hear? Can you sit up? Can you still walk? Can do your arms lift up things and, and, and cradle or hug someone? Can you still do those things? Fantastic. Appreciate everything in your body. And we want to do that and move forward and start to have movement in our body. And depending on where you are, because everybody's in a different place, that may be a little step of just sitting on the couch and, and just kind of moving around, maybe putting on some dance music and just, you know, click into that dance music and, and getting yourself swaying and moving. That, that for now may be the start for you. Um, when I want to get, you know, a little, I'll do a little dancing by myself. Um, I always listen to Aretha Franklin respect and, and that just, it gets me moving no matter what, but I also love going for walks. Um, and it, I'm not, you know, I, as some people, it frustrates me a little bit when, um, some people who are, um, health coaches will start to say to someone, okay, got to go to the gym, got to lift weights, got to go, you know, go on fast walks and uh, start to jog. And, you know, our bodies may not be in the situation that that's the first step. Maybe down the road, if that's a goal of yours, then great, that's perfect. But we need to take a step from where we are, wh where we are right now. If we haven't moved our bodies in years, then we're going to start, okay, what's the first step? What would I like to do? I'd rather see you move in ways that is enjoyable than to move in a forced manner. So if that's dance for you, if that's walking on the beach for you, if that's taking a, a little hike or a stroll or meeting with friends, bowling, what, you know, whatever it is for you. Find things that you would enjoy doing. It could be putting something on the internet and, um, you know, just 
going ahead and, and following somebody on the internet. I mean, I love doing yoga and things like that as well. I was a little intimidated at first, but um, I realized that uh, yoga teachers are probably the most patient in the world and they'll they're so excited that you're there they'll help you modify everything it's it's fantastic it's it's they're they're wonderful so whatever whatever it is for you that's what I want you to do is start to look at your body lovingly and what can I do to help my body not only in the food that I'm putting in this but to, to help my body start to move again. Because the thought that we, when, as we get older, that that automatically means that we're going to be stiff and not be able to move, that's really a fallacy. It, it's not true. The only reason that, those, that that is happening for many, many people is because they haven't been moving and they don't move their bodies and they've put a lot of toxic foods inside of them as well. So their body is in an inflamed state. So it doesn't feel comfortable to move. So we're going to reverse all of that. That's really what my protocol is all about is reversing that if it's already there or keeping it from happening if it's not there yet. So either way, it's very individualized on what I do. But And then um, the last thing that I really just want to talk about, because I always say finding pleasure of food, body, and soul, I also believe a lot in really just having pleasure in everything in our lives. Because I think sometimes if we're focused on, and especially if we've been maybe diagnosed with a health condition, um, you know, there's a lot of things like prediabetes and, and, and um, you know, high blood pressures and a, a lot of things like that. There's that tendency to get so stressed about that situation and focused on the disease. I would like for us to, it's not that we're going to ignore a situation that they are. We talked about that on day one. And if you haven't listened to that, um, you know, go back and listen to that. But we talked about that. It's not that we're going to ignore because on day one, we talked about really taking an un unjudgmental look at where are you right now? What's your situ current situation? Um, what is it that you may have for issues or problems? And okay, so we know that that's there. What are the steps we're going to take to improve that and to move you forward towards good health? So even if you have those type of situations that are going on, if we look at things, not so much of what is the problem, but versus what is the solution? So I'm facing that. Okay, I know that's there. So what is my solution? What would be the best course for me? Should I move more? I Can I clean up the foods that I'm eating? Um, if I have a certain situation, then we're going to adjust maybe what you're eating or how you're moving and things based on where you are at and what you can do and what your goals are. So I'm hoping that's making sense to you, but we also want to nourish our souls. Like what makes us happy? Um, the women that I work with, they're, we're mature. Um, I call, I say seasoned. Okay. We're seasoned and we're at a point in our life. We've probably spent many, many years taking care of other people and we've put ourselves, which now I wish I knew now, you know, but we always were hindsight's always 2020, right? But we spend so much time nourishing other people and many times we neglect ourselves. And that is including what, what feeds us? What makes us happy? Um, is it sunsets? Is it, um, you know, is it walking the beach? Is it um, being artistic? And tapping into those things, what really feeds our soul as well? Because when you're looking at making dramatic change and having a paradigm shift in um, how you look at the rest of your life, and we're not looking at a diet as something that's restrictive, but we're just looking at 
how am I going to nourish my body for the rest of the life? And when you start thinking of those things, how are you going to nourish your soul for the rest of your life? And that's something that I feel is just really important for us to embrace as women, as seasoned women, because we are, you know, I talked about this the first night, we're, we're probably going to live another 30, 40, 50, maybe even 60 years, hopefully 60 years. And thanks, funny girl. Amen. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, we're, we're going to be here for a long time. So why should we look at this as, okay, I'm going to decline for the next 30, 40 years until I'm gone. That's crazy. That's crazy. Why, why do we not, why do we look at that? Our mindset needs to shift into how much pleasure can I have in the next 60 years of life? <laughs> That's my goal. How much pleasure can I have? And of course, the more you nourish yourself, it, you'll end up blessing all of your friends, all of your family and anything that you want to do in the world. I mean, I'm here. My mission is to really help as many women as I can um, who are seasoned women get the best health that they can have and feel vibrant and feel fabulous about themselves and feel great in their bodies. That is my mission. That's my goal, what I want to be doing for years and years to come. And um, so I have to nourish myself. If I'm not nourished, I can't be here for everybody else. So that's what I'm hoping um, tonight. I really wanted to talk about that part of my program and really think about pleasure in your food choices, pleasure in your body, enjoy your body, get massages, whatever you need to do. One of the exercises that I do ask um, is that we do in the program is really to list and write what are your top pleasures? And a question I like to ask is, what, what do you want your life to look like? And when you start looking at things like that, then, you know, where do you want to go in the future and have that look like? So if you start looking things from that perspective, then write down everything. Like what would be your pleasurable things that you can do? And maybe, and probably eating will be one of them, but is it really pleasurable to, um, you know, eat a Big Mac? Now you may say, sure it is. Well, it might be pleasurable right now because your body doesn't even know what nourishing food tastes like. So we're, we'll change that because once you start eating really food that has a lot of nutrition and vitamins and minerals and, and all the things that we actually need to function and, and have our bodies run well, once you start doing that, your body loves it so much it will speak to you very loud and clear when you're not giving it something that it doesn't like. So I can promise you that because I'm just amazed. I used to in the past say that, oh, well, I could eat anything and nothing ever bothers me. And now because I eat cleanly most of the time, if I do choose to have something um, that is not really a clean food, my body tells me right away, I don't like that garbage. And so it, it, I'm listening, I'm listening, and I'm realizing that's what it's telling me, but that's, that's what our bodies are meant to do. So if you go ahead and just, you know, write some of your top like pleasures, what are your, what do you want to do that's going to be pleasurable for you while you're on this journey of feeding yourself great food, quality, quality, quality. It's, I mean, it's so important. And then um, just really appreciating what your body does for you and how you can feel fully nourished in every sense of the word, food and bo food, body and soul. So that was my message for tonight. Um, I hope that makes sense to you. I hope it's kind of coming together, what we're talking about every single night. And then um, tomorrow night, I'm going to go a little bit into actual diet trends. So I'm going to go into things like, um, 
the different types of diets that are out there. Um, keto, of course, is being one and fasting, Atkins, things like that. Um, of course, calories, we talked a little bit about that the other day and go through all of them and really just talk about the pros, the cons, um, and whether if there are pieces that you should probably incorporate into um, the diet that you're going to actually format for yourself and maybe the pieces that you don't want to have in there. So I'm going to talk about that and just kind of clean up some of the confusion around those diets. So if you have some questions and things, we can go through that. And then um, just as a reminder, on um, Friday night, I'm going to be talking about breakthroughs, how to create some breakthroughs. If you if you do feel a little bit stuck, some different things you can do that sometimes just a little tweak that you try it. The fun thing about breakthroughs is if you go into it with a curiosity mindset, try something. I'm going to mention a whole bunch of different things that really tend to work. Some of them I'll tell you if it personally worked for me. Um, other things that is just um, a general in the nutrition world that it's, it's just generally a good thing that it has worked for other people. And um, we'll just talk about some of those things. So it will be kind of a fun night, probably a short night on Friday night. And then uh, Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, um, in the morning, I will be doing a question and answer. I do think, I know Saturdays are usually a packed day, so I'm only, I only want to just have that time really for you guys so that if you do have questions, it's a little bit hard for me to be able to see all the scrolling questions. So in case I go back and there's questions there, things you want to ask me, that's really, I'm just going to have that time for you to ask me questions. If there's not a lot of questions or um, then it's probably going to be a short time, maybe 30 minutes at the most. And then next Monday will be the final night and, um, and really just go through the takeaways from everything that we've talked about, um, some of the biggest questions that you may have had, and, and then some actions you can take immediately to get started, put yourself on the right path, and um, you know any final things that we have to talk about at that point. So that's the schedule moving forward. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being here. I know time is valuable and um, I'm so grateful uh, for you to um, listen to the things that I have to share and hopefully it's helping. So see you tomorrow night. Thanks so much.